Welcome back to Automotive Misfits, the show that brings you cars that people dare not buy for reasons like expense, reliability, or because your friends told you to stay away. This week, I've got the Chrysler Crossfire in, and I'm gonna tell you, is it a car that you should buy or avoid? First thing first, massive thank you to Callum. Thank you very much for lending me your Crossfire. I know people who own these cars are very precious about their cars. So, Chrysler Crossfire, is it a car that I would buy? No. Rear wheel drive, a coupe, and a V6, which, in essence, sounds like a really, really good match, a match made in heaven. However, in the Crossfire, it's just everything around it that doesn't gel. The car has been put together very quickly by Chrysler, and it just doesn't feel complete. The quality inside is not there, even though the outside looks like an expensive car. And you know what? I'm actually quite a fan of the looks. I know I'm gonna shock a few people with that. I think the looks are pretty decent, but inside that's where everything is let down. I don't like the seats because there's hardly any lumbar support at all. I don't even like the doors. I don't like the center console. There are loads of buttons on it. Everything is kind of light, gray, cheap, plastic. The interior of the car is just ugly. It's not a nice place to be looking at when you're doing long distances, if you want to do long distances in the Crossfire. However, you do have a V6 with around 220 horsepower. Remember, it's a 3.2 Mercedes V6. So it sounds all right. Let's just go around this corner and then drop the automatic gearbox down a couple of gears. Sounds pretty decent. 0 to 60 in this, apparently 6.5 seconds. It feels more like an eight second car. Top speed is around 155 miles an hour. Now we do have some cool things with this. We have the rear boot spoiler that pops up and down. And again, because Chrysler was in a bit of a hurry when they made this car, you can actually hear the mechanism, the electrics of it going, So that's pretty poorly made. Now let us discuss the way that the Crossfire drives. It isn't a sports car. Let's get that out of the way straight away because it is wallowy. It rolls around more than an adult film entertainment personality. Shall we call them that? The steering is heavy. There is pretty much zero feedback through the steering. The rack itself is super slow. And what I've noticed is when you're driving along, even on a straight road, you, you make a little, little adjustment to the steering and then it kind of wanders and then you have to make a bigger one in the other direction. It's just disconcerting. It's not a nice car to drive. As for the brake feel, I'd liken the crossfires to a wet sponge. So have a change of pants handy if you intend on attacking your favorite B-roads. This car does have cruise control, which is good because I use cruise control a lot. However, the cruise control stalk sits just above the indicator stalk right there. So on a couple of occasions, I've knocked that down and knocked that up instead of actually going for the indicator. So to everyone who I cut up without indicating, I apologize. It's not my fault. Blame Chrysler. But despite what I think about the Crossfire, people do really love them. So here's what owner Callum, aka Lord Twaddle, has to say about his very own car. I personally bought a Crossfire because it's a little bit different. I like rare and unusual and quirky cars and this very much matches my criteria. It does absolutely everything I ask it to do and I think it looks absolutely fabulous. My favourite thing about the car has to be the styling. I think they look brilliant. They've aged phenomenally well. It's got a boat tail rear end, a sort of teardrop shape, similar to old Bugattis from the 30s, if you sort of squint and stand about two miles away. But the other thing is it's actually very comfortable. The engine is brilliant, it's smooth, it makes a nice noise, it's got plenty of power, and it's actually really cheap. I paid just £3,000 for this car a year ago. I've had a number of problems with it. It's mostly down to the fact that it's a 14-year-old car, so there's some rust spots in places, the wheels could do a refurb. It's got an annoying drain on the battery, which if I leave it for a few days, I just disconnect it anyway, so there's not really much of a problem. I've had some suspension bushings replaced, but the biggest problem is a lot of the parts break on this car, and the parts that break are the Chrysler bits, which is about 30% of the car, as opposed to 70, which is all Mercedes. 
The only trouble is with those bits is they break a lot and they're very rare. I have to import them from America or find a scrappage dealer and that makes it incredibly expensive. If around 220 horsepower doesn't do it for you, but you're a quirky crossfire kind of guy, then you'll want the faster SRT6 version. Just like this very car. Now, before we go into driving, I want to tell you the differences between the SRT6 versus the normal Crossfire. Firstly, aesthetics. We've got these slats on the grill. Underneath the very large hood, we've got a supercharger. So 330 brake horsepower versus around 220 horsepower. If you come towards the side, SRT6 badges. We've got a different alloy wheel design with larger tires. We've got more SRT6 badging on the seats. And if you come round the back, we have got a fixed rear wing, so no active aero on this. Apart from that, it is crossfire business as usual. I want to say a big thank you to Stuart from SDSC Specialist Cars. This is his SRT6. It is currently for sale, so we'll leave a link in the description. Now let's go for a little drive. Let us taste 330 horsepower. Let us see what this supercharger does to the crossfire. Immediately you notice that 330 horsepower. Remember this car is one and a half times more powerful than a standard car. Another thing that the SRT guys did was make the body three times stiffer. And as you can see, it is, yeah, pretty much three times more uncomfortable. It is not a smooth car to drive on a B road, but it is definitely fast. Not to 60, around 5.2 seconds and it will just run shy of 160 miles an hour. So it is super, super rapid. It's a bit like the SRT guys, they went out for dinner, they ordered themselves a, a Thai green curry. And then when the waiter came up to them, the waiter said, oh, how's the food? And they said, oh, it's not spicy enough for us. So he went to the chef, chef came back with a ghost chili, just poured it into their eyes. And they thought, oh, wow, that's awesome. That's what we'll do to our car. That's kind of what this is. Just one of those cars, it, it pulls too many strings in too many directions. It's not an enthusiast car because it doesn't have a manual gearbox and it's just too hardcore for Crossfire buyers. These days, top SRT6s will set you back around £9,000 in the UK. And sure, they're faster and sharper than standard, but if you want something quirky with a great engine and superior steering, then a Nissan 350Z is the route I'd go down. On the other hand, if you're after something with incredible all-round performance, then do yourself a favour and drop the same nine grand or thereabouts on an E46 M3, because they're wicked. Personally, I wouldn't buy this car because I like lightweight, I like nice steering, I like delicacy, I like handling. This has none of those things. It feels heavy, it feels like I'm steering a barge. However, I get why people like these cars because it is so unique. Now that we've covered everything from how it drives to what it's like to live with, let's discuss what to look out for if life with a Chrysler Crossfire is for you. Starting with a 3.2 Mercedes V6, it's a reliable and solidly built engine that shouldn't cause you too many headaches. That said, crank sensors on early cars can fail, which means the V6 won't fire up. As for the 5-speed automatic gearbox, it's a lazy unit, especially between reverse and drive, but is again pretty solid. Like the R170 Mercedes SLK on which the Crossfire is based, you'll be lucky to find one without rust, especially in the UK. As for the interior, the cup holder is poorly designed and badly executed, so will likely be broken unless it's already been swapped out. Apart from that, make sure you test all the electrics and ensure that the active wing works too, because fixing a broken switch is expensive. Would I recommend a Crossfire to someone? Yes, they are remarkably cheap nowadays. You can pick up a good one for 4,000. You can pick up ropey ones for two and a half thousand. And like I said before, it's very capable. It's very practical. It's comfortable. It's rare. If you're willing to look after it, it's like you should have any car really, this is a brilliant choice. If you're looking to buy one, do it now because they've depreciated to a point where they're very affordable. And these are a definite future classic. If you're looking to buy one as a future classic investment, by all means, get a later car, get a Roadster, and get the manual gearbox. Those are currently worth about five or six grand for a really, really good one, and keep them in a garage, keep them clean, they will be worth something in the future. If you do not like this car, fair enough, you're more than entitled to your opinion, but I will happily drive this 
all day long and I don't care what anyone else says. If you buy a car simply because you like it, that is far more important than what other people around you say. Finally, it's time to answer the question of whether or not the Chrysler Crossfire is a car you should consider buying. If you like to be different, if you're a little bit quirky, then this is the car for you because itself is a quirky car. And don't forget, rear wheel drive, 3.2 V6, good looking body for around two and a half thousand pounds. For me though, driving is too fun not to make the most of, which is why I'd urge you to look elsewhere for real driving kicks. But I do agree with what Callum said earlier. So buy a car simply because you like it, because that's far more important than what anyone else says, even me. I hope you guys, even the Crossfire owners out there, enjoyed this episode of Automotive Misfits. For more episodes, click here, and to subscribe to Car Throttle, click here. I'm out of here.